All right, Titus. Yes. Uh, for those of you who haven't seen the work, it's upstairs. It's across from the bridge. Uh, it's an interactive video game. Uh, or could I call it a video game? It's an app. It's an app. Yeah. <laughs> it's an interactive app. All right. And there you see this sort of uh, background where it, with some balls laying. As soon as you enter the room or get close enough, you'll see uh, yourself be projected in some sort of geometric figure that's really uh, psychedelic and uh, you can start to interact with the ball game. Uh, Titus, yes. thank you very much for joining us here. Thank you for having me. Uh, maybe a short introduction. Where are you from? Um, well, I was born in Romania. I'm a Hungarian citizen and I lived most of my life in Canada, so I'm also Canadian. Can come a little closer? Oh, yeah. <laughs> and uh, now, uh, for the past four years, I've been living in Europe. I came back uh, to Europe, and uh, for the past almost a year, I've been living here in Romania. And actually, it's very interesting how you've gone around. Because you're not here just as an artist. You've done, what was it, painting and architecture? In yes. Hungary? Uh, no, in, uh, in, in Bucharest, I studied uh, painting and architectural art. Right. And uh, after leaving Romania and uh, reaching Toronto, um, I went back. First, uh, first, I worked for two years as a stained glass artist in Toronto. Then I went back to school to the Ontario College of Art and Design, where I studied printmaking and uh, sculpture installation. And then after that, I studied uh, 3D computer animation at Sheridan College, also in Ontario. Graduating from there, I was hired by a company uh, working in uh, special effects and animation for uh, commercial work and for film. There I worked on a, uh, on a pilot that took half a year to, to make a pilot, animated pilot for character animation, which didn't work out, but it was interesting to work on and it was a very good uh, project to work on. And from there, I, w I was hired by the Canadian Broadcasting Corporation, the CBC, and I worked as a broadcast designer until I took early retirement for five years. Then I came back to Europe, and uh, now I'm here because uh, I, as I, we decided to move here to, to Groningen with my partner, and I looked into the option of going back to school there's always something new to learn, and this is how I got here to MedTech at the Frank Moore Institute, which I really enjoy. And did you start out with these sort of artworks, like this interactive, this interactivity, this everything, like uh, video game related? No, things? not really. It is my first interactive piece. Before this, I, I, my work is based on programming. In uh, 2000, I uh, taught myself uh, how to program on the computer. I never did program. I, I never learned programming in a school, so I'm self-taught and quite unsure of that. But my work is based on it and because I really like working uh, with code. It has a lot of power, and I think computers are so much in our lives now that uh, knowing how to how to use them and how to make them work for you is important. And uh, since 2000, my, my work is uh, based on that, based on computer programming. It is generative, which means that I create the code and then the code itself generates uh, the work, the images that I'm Because actually, I've been talking with him for about two weeks now, not only like as a sort of because I had to do an introductionary talk with him to get to know his project and everything and then it turned out like besides this there's this whole other world out there from his work which is like completely uh, completely different from what we see here because here it's like rather simplistic in a sort of way there's like a uh, you get an idea that it's about play that it's about sort of like the audience and engaging with that and then his other works actually are uh, computer-generated images, which also stem from code and which also stem from um, that, but it's completely different. Like 
It's, it's true, yes. And how, like, you have a series that you work on, which was, uh, what was it, the Peter de Vries? <laughs> Peter de Vries, yes. Uh, Peter de Vries is a character in uh, Dune, if you know uh, Dune by Frank Herbert. So he's, uh, he's a human computer, practically. So what I'm trying to imagine is when uh, artificial intelligence would come to be self-aware, how would that look or how would that feel? And uh, Peter Vries is one imaginary character who does that. So in a way, I'm, uh, I'm trying to become him and see the world through his eyes. Because a lot about your work is about that, isn't it? Like it is. a lot of it is about artificial intelligence and how we perceive art. Yes. Because uh, the title of this work is uh, the shaky grounds of uh, finite possibilities and infinite options, yes. which are already hinting at sort of mathematics. They're sort of thinking about like uh, things. Of, about sort of impossibility, because we had a long discussions about whether or not uh, we can imagine new things, that even art is nothing but just a random collection of things, right? Yes, well I think that uh, our imagination is bound by uh, the culture we grow up in, and we can imagine only things that we have seen, and only things that uh, we have heard of, and then we combine those uh, elements into novel combinations. Um, I'm interested in the uh, visual landscape that is beyond what can be imagined. And beyond that, what I mean by that is beyond uh, our ability to compute, our ability to combine, and this is where computers come in because with them we can somehow make the computer go beyond what, what we can figure out. I think that that's really great. They do a great job at that, and I think they are awesome tools. So you work a lot with that, don't you? Only with that. Like, like only with that. Because <laughs> you, we were also talking about what was it? Um, like it was this experiment with uh, a game or something? Uh, yes, the uh, it, it is called AlphaGo, and uh, Google has created a, an artificial intelligence. Well, a neural network that learned its taught him itself taught itself to play the game of Go, uh, which is a game of strategy. And Go itself is based on uh, on intuition because it is impossible for a player to figure out all the possible moves. So it, the moves are based on what feels right and. This is a big step forward to be able to, pr to make a neural network figure it out on its own, teaching itself how to play this game and then play better within 40 days than any human ever did. And I think that kind of points towards the direction where things are going. Because a lot of your artworks are also like, because actually when I started, I mean before I came here I've extensively Google him, I've like uh, really, you know, tried to figure out before I talk to him, like what on earth is this all about? And I have the same when I went into his work that I kind of like tried to erase everything that I knew about him and went in and it's like, all right, I'm here, I'm playing, but what does it all mean? You know, what is, what is the thing of this? Because actually like as a person, I, I overcomplicate everything I do, like as an artist, I like to take things the incredible hard way of things and like I like being tricked, pushed into thinking in different directions. So I was standing in front of this art piece and tried to erase everything that I knew about him already and just going like, all right, am I being tricked here? Is, it, is there something here that I can, uh, that's just playing with me? Because I know how complicated you can think about artificial intelligence and such and suddenly I'm presented with this incredibly simple thing. Like, I'm just standing there as a sort of like Daft Punk figure playing with a ball that makes a gong sound every time it hits the overpassing one, which I thought was incredibly fun, but I thought I felt I was kind of being tricked or something, that you were presenting something that was almost too simple or something, that it's like, it is, is it art? 
you know, is, is this game art? Is well, I don't know. I, I think it is art in the way that it involves the viewer. Because the viewer starts to discover certain uh, rules that, or certain possibilities and options. That's, that's what the game is about. Uh, there are a very limited number of options, what you can do there, but the outcome is always different. As people go in and start to interact with the, with the game, uh, they figure out ways and strategies how to hit the target, make the big sound, the gong, and how, how, to, how to move about. And I think that, that is also, they also feel a sense of uh, fulfillment the more they master the game, the more they master the, the process of, of and getting the result. So I, I, I don't know, there, there is a kind of a discovery there, there is also improvement in a way and uh, change. Because I had the idea that everything was very... Um, Sort of very critical about art itself <laughs> because you, because uh, uh, we had a discussion about this whether or not art was just completely random. That we are just, you know, as artists, you're just finding stuff, you're making things, you're doing things, and then suddenly you're just, you try and like project it back logic on it. You know, you're retrospectively looking back and you're staring at something, and then you try and deduce something from that. Like, you rationalize or, it. Yeah, you rationalize it, and that's sort of how art comes to be. And whether with you, it's like you do the programming and bam, there's art or something. You don't seem to question it. It's like, bam, here's something that's irrational. And you present it every time. It's like, yeah, sort of is this art. Well, something that happens as, uh, as I write the code and the images are coming up is that uh, I start to have a feel for what is easy and what is not. And then I discard a lot of what I'm doing because I know that that is not move, a move or a change towards complexity that I'm interested in. And then I, I, I erase those. And I'm only showing step by step the way it is moving in the direction of complexity. Since that is, that is what, what interests me. And uh, as far as the logic goes, uh, yes, I, I do believe that uh, in spite of what people think about the artists being inspired and getting all kinds of interesting uh, inputs uh, in a very uh, non-linear fashion, uh, I think that uh, that is true, but it is much less poetic. I think people just decide, oh, I see this and I put this together and this might look interesting. And then they follow the logic of, of that combination. And when they follow it to the end, then something interesting is coming out. And then, then the work stands together. It, it gains structure. I think that it's an organic growth from an idea, step by step, uh, with a lot of effort and through the process, towards something that becomes organically and, and with the structure. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, it makes sense. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I get it. But yeah. like, here actually, like, we're mostly sitting here as two artists, I think, like, discussing, because I know that I do a lot of random stuff, you know, like, all my work just goes about, for, like, on a gut feeling. Yes. You know, like, sort of tapping into uh, things that, uh, I always think that I don't understand and I feel that there's something in it and so I try and follow that sort of jump on logic, you know, that leap on logic or something. Which is why I was rather bothered by your art pieces, especially like the first ones. Because uh, for those that know, don't know me, I'm just a painter. And then I saw his, like, he has this Peter de Vries series with symbols and I was trying to actively figure it out and I was trying to going like, yeah, you know, I, I can paint that, that's, that's all right. And then he told me, no, no you, can, you, can, you can't imagine this. You can't, you can't think beyond these things. And that troubled me very much, which is also why this art piece that you presented here troubled me even more, because it's like, yeah, you can't imagine that or something. You can't imagine the outcome. You can't imagine the starting point. Okay, we start here. But where it will lead and how, how it is developing, that, no, I don't think you can. I, did, I don't think anybody can. <laughs> yeah, but how do you see, like, this 
is an interactive piece. And you seem to be actively going to, like, using all of these sort of digital tools to expand into a sort of new territory where you suddenly engage, like, actively engaging with the audience. This is, and it seems to be a goal of yours to, you know, this is the first thing you've presented that can do these things. Yes. And you seem to want to go further, but why are you pursuing this goal? Like, why isn't those, why aren't those symbols enough from Peter de Vries? Why do you want to engage with the audience? Like, are you, are you trying to actively engage as an artist with the audience in that, in a new way? Or are you... It was an interesting experience to see people uh, interact with I, I could have sat there for hours watching them interact with it. I thought it was... Uh, they enjoyed it and that was great. They had great fun with it and I, I thought that, that, that was very rewarding for me. Yeah. I mean, but like, because as I said, like it seems like you want to challenge people, you know? Like it seems like you want to... Uh, make them question creativity, the use of art, the uh, intelli I, I intelligence agree. even. Like you seem to really go like, yeah. I, I think we are just uh, advanced prototypes of what AI could be. We, I, I think we have evolved this, this intelligence, what AI is for doing the first steps towards. And I do think that they, they, AI will become self-aware at a certain point. And I don't see that as a threat. I think it is amazing to have uh, something look at reality as is, not reality as interpreted through culture and through habits and through cliches. But look at it as is, and then maybe we can have also a glimpse at, at, it, at reality the way it is. Because that almost makes it seem like your ultimate art piece would be artificial intelligence. Like something that it stands on its own, looks at reality in a sort of like different way and present that as a thing. No, I, what I would like to do, uh, it's, 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 it's close but not, not really. What I would like is to, to have brainstorming with, a, with artificial intelligence and question, you know, what, what does it see about reality? Because then, then if you have a very clear and unbiased view, you can reflect on it. Then I can reflect on it in a different way than I can reflect on my biased, view, biased views. So it's mostly about biases. I think reality. so. Because we each perceive reality differently depending on where uh, we lived, where we grew up, what we learned, how, what school we went to, who we interacted with. That, that's all influencing us. But then if there is something that doesn't respond to that. It's, there's something that can see, okay, this is how it is because that's how it is. And you, you have that feedback. Feedback makes you move forward very fast. And that's what also what I like about uh, working with a computer. The feedback loop is very, very fast. I do something, I see it right away. I know if it is satisfying or not satisfying, and if it isn't, then I know how to move forward. And that is happening a few hundred times a day, and instead of the way you paint, is you have to yeah. finish your work, right? Then you sit back, then you reflect on it, and that takes days, weeks, maybe long a long time. So your feedback loop is very slow. You and understand it, what yeah. I'm saying? Yeah? But you want to progress really fast forward, because I, because I actually like it to take it slow, just because everything else is so fast, because everyone else is moving so fast. Yeah, kind of go like, yeah, fuck it, I'm gonna paint. You yeah, know, like. and you can, you can take time off, you know, and don't do anything. And that, that, that's okay, because you, you have time to digest what, what is happening. So I think it's, in that way it is also, you get, get a lot of feedback, you still have to digest it. You cannot assimilate it instantly. Yeah. You know, you work, 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 and well, oh, where did I get? So you, know, you start to pull back a little bit, look at it. And then move forward again. Yeah, because with the uh, the symbols or yeah. the series, actually you move very fast. I think yes. you, like you generate a lot of stuff. It's true. Like two times a day. What is it? Even Once more. Day? Yeah. Even more. Even more. Yes. But yes. It's it is it is quite fast. And uh, so I, yeah, what I'm looking at is is very uh, much about. 
composition and relationships and uh, contrasts and how how the the structure of, of the image works and or how, not because <laughs> why are you doing it so much is it just to get that feedback constantly yes i'm addicted to it. <laughs> it's true all right yeah so it, it is it is this this visual stimulus and uh, it, in, it is not rational. It is for me. It is like uh, music or, or jazz. You don't think about it in rational terms, or about in terms of a story or a storyline, or in terms of something that uh, uh, you can tell back. It's something that you feel in your guts. It's 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 uh, so intense in a in visual way, not not. Well, I think we're going to conclude on that. Uh, Titus, thank you very much. Thank you. I'm sure we'll continue this discussion anyways. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, thank you. Good for all. Right. Thank you. <laughs>